Well, I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. And I lost my voice, but I still want to do this tutorial. It's coming by request from Anka Kellerman. Please, can you do some more tutorials on watercolor art using photos? Would love to see and try that. Yes, that's very easy to do. The settings are a little tricky, but I want to do it today to show you how you can create a watercolor effect and have it bleed like this. You can make from a photo the bleeding edge, and it's easy to crop it if you prefer the rectangle full page art. Let's begin by setting up our document properties. Go to File, Document Properties. You'll get a dialog box under Front Page, the format I'm on, A4. That's 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. The only thing we'll change is orientation. Let's click over to Landscape. This technique will work with any type of photo that you want to focus on. I got this one, these boats from rawpixel.com. I typed in boat sunset, and on the first page, I scrolled down, I found this one right here. I did want to choose something that had some contrast a nice color because that'll help make the process go easier. After you download it, drag the file onto the Inkscape canvas. And the first thing we'll do is we'll make a duplicate. Control D because I want to revisit it. Put this to the side. And the method to extract the subject that we want will be using a mask. Go grab the circle tool. See what you have it set to. This is set to blue. The way masking works, go up to object, fill and stroke. Whatever is white, will be taken from the photo. So let's make the whole thing white to begin with. On the bottom of the fill and stroke menu, you can see opacity, cut it in half to around 50, so we can see where we're going. I'm going to make it bigger because I'm going to add now a gradient, make it back to full opacity. On the fill tab, go over to this one here, radial gradient, and you'll see the default goes into effect. Over here, create an edit gradient tool, click that once, you'll now see these bars. The center box is the starting point, which correlates to this side of the gradient slider. That's what we want, full white, we'll drag it out. Remember, the mask is going to take whatever is white. It's also going to take into account transparency. So as it goes fading into nothing, it'll fade your mask into nothing. Go back to selector tool. Using the handles, I'm gonna squish this down a little bit and drag it wider. I wanna get these boats primarily, but I also want some of the sky and some of the ocean. I don't want this guy. The oval with my gradient, I know it's going all the way to here, which I don't want. So you can either shrink it down or you can go back to the edit gradients and drag the width of the gradient in. What I don't want is to have a hard edge come out of the mask. I've got the masking shape selected. Hold shift, get your boat picture, object, mask, set mask. There's the beginning of it. I probably could have fixed the bottom of the mask so this doesn't have a hard edge, but that's okay. We're going to add the watercolor bleed down there. Now we can do some watercolor. I'll show you the settings here. First, let's center up the page. I hit the zoom to fit page window where you can push number five. Click on the create circles tool. Somewhere down here at the bottom, draw open a circle. Then you might see it totally blank because the last thing we did was we made that white masking gradient. On the fill and stroke menu, turn it to something dark blue. It will work with any color, but the darker the color, the easier it is to understand the settings of the watercolor filter. Also, another tip, it does help to start small. Keep it about maybe 10 across the bottom here. And the effect is found under filter, textures, watercolor, and it disappears. That's why watercolor is tricky. It's easy to do once you know how to set it up, but before then, what would you do if it just went blank like that? Don't touch anything. Go back to filters, filter editor, and you get the sidebar menu. Click somewhere in Gaussian blur or turbulence. You want this area right here. For a beginner or even some intermediate users, there's just too much going on. Don't worry about most of it. Start with Gaussian blur. Go down to your standard deviation slider and reduce it down to zero. To understand how it works, start almost at zero and drag it open until you see part of a square right here. Inkscape is sampling from a swatch of a watercolor and that little square is it. So you want to have that jagged square for now. Go down to turbulence, the next one down. The type should be fractal noise and for base frequency, hit the plus once, that'll take you to 13. Now you can see some pretty cool watercolor stuff happening. That fractal noise at 0.13 is almost a little bit too busy. Let's take it down to 0.10. You can see plenty of variation and don't worry about the swatch sticking out there because we can fix that. Skip down to displacement map and this will change the scale of that swatch. So there is this, see the square? It's under there and I can fill it and there we go. Those are the only three things you need to change to get this cool watercolor effect. 
to be thorough, just to go through the rest in case you're really messed up or someone messed up your settings. The first one, Gaussian blur we did, turbulence we did, composite should be blend over, color matrix, blend, don't touch anything. We did displacement map, composite, effect blend, operator in, another composite, operator in, another composite, add effect blend, operator, arithmetic, last one, blend, Add effect blend mode multiply. I do have a dedicated watercolor settings tutorial. I think it has like an egg on the cover on the thumbnail. If you want a more thorough romp through these filter effects, but that's it. Just Gaussian blur, turbulence, displacement map, and you get this. Watch how cool this part is. I have a black X in the center. I can click on the X and move it around and it changes. Oop, there's some of the swatch. It changes how things look. Let's say you liked it here, but you saw your swatch again. What do you think you would do? Go back to displacement map and fill it in. I'll point out another quirk here. If I go back to selector tool and I want to move this, it changes your ink plot. And you may not want that. This change actually looks better, so let's keep it. To stop it from altering every time you move it, hold shift and control and resize your watercolor. For some reason, now when you move it around, it stays. Close out of this. Why don't we save this in case we want to use it again. I'll do control D. Now I can make it much, much bigger. What I want to do is put it underneath this and have it blend. Right now it's on top. If I'm on the fill and stroke menu set to fill, I can eyedropper someplace in the sky. So I see that and have it kind of just bleed. Maybe a touch darker. I'm going to cheat by doing control D and we can drag this one to the other side up here for the directionals, flip it. That's better. Let's make this one huge. I might have forgotten to show you when you want to drop this below the image. These are the hierarchy steps. Drop it to the bottom. Let's change the color on this slightly. It looks like it's going from orange to yellow. Maybe this should be more yellow. And this could be a richer orange. Another cheat, if this is too transparent for you, select it, do control D. It'll double it up and make it more vibrant. Drop that to the bottom. That's looking good right there. There's other programs you could use to do this type of thing, like a Photoshop or Affinity Photo. But Inkscape does have some built-in raster effects for images. I've got the image selected here. I'll go to Extensions, Raster. Try this one down here, Oil Paint. You'll get a little pop-up. It's going to drop an oil paint effect on the image itself. We'll do a live preview with the radius of 2. Might be hard to tell. Let's zoom in. It's not letting me zoom. I'll just apply it, close. Can you tell the difference? This is the oil painting effect on the image. We bled the edge on the top. Now let's get the ocean cleaned up. Take our original. Why don't we make this more purple? Control D to duplicate that. Because I messed up on the mask and I see a hard line, I've got to block that line. Right there is good. This can now turn back to blue. Drop that to the bottom. Why don't we use our original to blend over this bad line? Somewhere in there is okay. You could go back to Filter Editor and make your own watercolor splotches for each one. I'm just cheating with the same one over and over. One more modification you may or may not know is inside of Inkscape. Click back on the image. You can change some of the lightness and contrast or even color. Under Filters, Color, Lightness, Contrast. These bars happen to be from whatever I did last. We'll do Live Preview. And you can experiment up here. I'm just changing the lightness slider. Right there is good. I'm going to go with 30.99. For contrast, do we keep it where it is? Let's see. Negative 3.51. Apply. Close. The one thing I want to do to tie it all together, I want to really darken the darks. And a cool way to do that is back to the original that we saved. Go to Path. Trace Bitmap. If you've never done trace bitmap, it's one of the best tools inside of Inkscape. Basically, it helps you create vector objects based off of raster images. For single scan, detection mode, brightness cutoff, it's going to look at the light and dark of the image and create the vector based on that. The default is 0.45 and it's a complete mess. Let's lighten it, lighten it, lighten it. That's what I want. All the rest of the defaults stay the same. Speckles selected, smooth corner selected, optimized selected. Down here, apply. And this is what we got. I don't need all this extra stuff. A few options you have to delete it. You can go to Edit Paths by Node. Create a selection box around the node you don't want and push Delete. For simplicity, I'm going to create a stamping shape of only the things that I want. 
doesn't have to be green, just out of habit. I like to do my throwaway shapes in green. I've got the clipping object selected, hold shift, grab the darkness from the photo, object, clip, set, and here it is. I'm gonna add a touch of blur, maybe like one, three, do three. Let's go to the color we had, some type of dark blue. And on blend mode, we'll go to color dodge. Now I have that vector overlay on color dodge and I can play with this. Do we like red, orange? I think I want blue. I think that's okay right there. Let's zoom back out and take a look at what we made. Once you have it set up, you can change the colors, work on the contrast, whatever you need. If you like the bleed edge, you're done, just save it. If you want to square it off, like it's a piece of artwork, the first thing you have to do is group all of it together. And remember, some of these watercolors go pretty far out. Grab far, far away over everything. Control G will group it, and you can create your clipping shape wherever you want it. Shape is selected, hold shift, grab the big group, object, clip, set. And there you go. There is the answer to Anka's question. Can you do more watercolors with photos? Yes, you can. So if you had any other questions, any other requests, let me know in the comments. Again, thanks, sorry for the throat, and see you next time. Oh, I left the guy in there.